Hey stargazers, this is your weekly astrological forecast for the week of September the 18th to the 24th, 2022. The astrological headline this week is of course the fall equinox, so I'll be covering off the sun's entry into the sign of Libra today. The sun's ingress, coupled with some major celestial markers for our two inferior and major personal planets Venus and Mercury, are contributing to some important changes this week. The overarching energy for the days ahead is all about emotional stock-taking, intellectual wisdom, and, with Mercury's inferior conjunction to the Sun taking place this week, the start of a new cycle, which we'll talk about momentarily. That's why this week is pure court card energy. The Queen of Cups, who embodies the very essence of mature inner wisdom and emotional fortitude, and the Page of Wands. The latter speaks of waxing mercurial energy, fresh, new, and poised to start something all over again. With that, let's get started with baselining the sky. We enter this week with the moon wrapping up its tour through the sign of Castor and Pollux, about to enter Cancer where it picks up dignity for a few days. In the watery sign of its rulership, we may find ourselves desiring PSLs, cups of tea, or cozy blankets. We may also find ourselves taking comfort in old memories and nostalgic reminiscences, especially as the moon pings retrograde Mercury by trying, potentially bringing hope and comfort to any blasts from our past making an appearance this retrograde season. This week, retrograde Mercury will make its way all the way back to 28 degrees of Virgo, which means that it will conjunct the Sun upon its exit from Libra. The conjunction with the Sun is, of course, the birth of Mercury's new cycle, which will take us through the balance of the year. Mercury will enter its next pre-retrograde shadow on December the 12th, 2022. It will turn retrograde on December the 28th and then direct again on January the 18th, 2023. This retrograde will take place fully in the sign of Capricorn, the domicile of Saturn, and an astrological sign associated with hard work, diligence, practicality, singularity of focus, and the building of foundations. As we kick off this new Mercury cycle and look forward to the later retrograde of the year, Mercury will pass through Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius, collecting, synthesizing, and sifting through all the information that it gathers along the way. The themes of balance, depth, transformation, and expansion will all come to bear on the December retrograde, so as you complete this one, consider where you may need to build stable foundations in the areas of your chart ruled by Mercury as we close out this calendar year. Next, Mars and Venus start the week still with an orb of a square, albeit Venus is separating, easing some of the pressure that you might have felt last week from Mars poking you to take immediate, if not impulsive, action. Venus will perfect its trine to Uranus and Taurus by Tuesday, September the 20th, a signature that it's been under since it ingressed into Virgo, but which was likely gaining intensity over the last couple of weeks. Venus is now invisible in the sky, under the sun's beams, so this is going to be a much more interior-focused Venus, one that has us engaging in deep contemplation and undergoing a kind of metamorphosis. This can be a time where we need to approach our relationships with more tenderness, respect, and care, since this phase can correspond to a period of potential burnout, secrecy, diminished personal autonomy and agency, and a lack of assertive energies. As Venus prepares to emerge later in October as the evening star, this Venus will be less zesty. It will be possessed of greater wisdom, maturity, and prudence in the waning phase of her hemicycle. That's the Queen of Cups through and through. Venus may be more reticent this week to act on any impulsive pressures from Uranus in one of its home signs. Though Uranus may be continuing its shakeup of the topics that Taurus rules in our charts, and related to its more universal associations with values, property, possessions, and monetary earnings, Uranus's irrational push to drastic action may be held at bay by a Venus that's feeling less action-oriented as Mars's influence weakens. And of course, that underworld descent has us potentially taking stock of relationships that might have been initiated earlier this year when Venus began her new cycle in our lives. The other potential that I like about this trine Venus is forming with Uranus is the heightened opportunity for a burst of creative inspiration, invention, innovation, or a desire to seek emotional freedom through some expression of Venusian beauty. 
This week, we may all be well served by answering the call of this transit, by singing, dancing, painting, writing, taking in some art, visiting a museum, or simply expressing ourselves through the medium that most calls to us. You may find it profoundly liberating. On a more internal level, given that we are winding up the sun's transit through Virgo, where metaphorical and possibly literal harvests are the name of the game, we are entering a period of stock-taking and evaluation, and in our individual natal charts, we could see the area where Venus is located and the signs that it rules experience a quiet buzz as Venus contemplates the next phase of her journey beginning in late October. Venus will also oppose retrograde Neptune on Saturday, September the 24th. It will be applying to a conjunction with retrograde Mercury and is co-present the Moon, which will conjunct Venus in the wee hours of the morning. Since the Moon's transit is brief and it will have moved significantly by the time that most of us are awake, I don't think it will do much more than amplify the revisioning exercise that this Venus and retrograde Mercury seem to be doing, but I do think that the opposition from retrograde Neptune could throw a bit of a diluting wrench into any efforts at clear strategic thought. Neptune can and does make things fuzzy, and so I'll issue the oft-quoted flag around Neptune oppositions leading to a temporary lack of clarity, disenchantment, or blurred thinking. But let's not overlook some of Neptune's other significations, including deceptions, disappearances, and disloyalty, and as Venus is the natural significator of relationships, let's be on our guards not to get swept up by anything or anyone that seems especially tantalizing. A general caution that is always issued under various planetary retrogrades is that any relationships initiated on them, under them, particularly Venus retrogrades, could have their challenges when the planets go direct. This is often because we can see clearer or simply see things differently. With Neptune opposing the planet of relationships, I think this flag is equally valid since it could potentially lead to blinding via rose-colored glasses where we think the object of our affection is especially enticing. Alternatively, this transit could simply lead us to build up lofty hopes and aspirations for an ideal in a relationship, a friendship, or a business partnership even, overinflating our sense of how things ought to be rather than seeing them as they are. Those in longer-term relationships may find this transit, although brief, punctuated by a disappointment in this arena, recognizing that something you might have conceived of isn't quite reality. Finally, the other tug of war that this opposition may introduce is a brief pull between Neptune's siren song of daydreamy imagination and a Venus toned down by a double dose of pragmatism. And with the sun about to change signs and invite in the numinous darkness in the second half of the astrological year, this energy could cause some friction because the overarching solar path isn't oriented towards the boundless possibility of the spring, but rather the stock taking of the past few months in order to consolidate for what lies ahead. Since we're on the topic of the sun, let's talk about the equinox, because the sun's ingress into the sign of Libra is within minutes of an exact conjunction to Mercury, making this particular start to Mercury's new synodic cycle especially powerful in my view. Mercury's new cycle begins at almost exactly zero degrees of one of the cardinal points of the chart. In fact, it occurs at 0 degrees 14 minutes in the wee hours of September the 23rd. That makes it a significant point of initiation. This phase of Mercury's now waxing hemicycle is known as the Promethean phase. If this calls to mind ideas of independence, the stealing of fire, courage, bravery, and innovation, then you're not far off since this is a Mercury that's bounding into the world intent on accumulating knowledge and information. During this phase, which begins from Mercury's inferior conjunction on September the 23rd to its superior conjunction on November the 8th, Mercury has an inquisitive, youthful energy, not unlike the qualities of the sign of Aries, where it's desiring adventure, it sees little risk aversion, and it's exploring all of the possibilities of crafting something fresh in our lives. This is the phase where Mercury will begin a new chapter in its journey taking the information, skills, and knowledge that it acquired over the last three months into the next cycle. It's a Mercury that will, once again, be concerned with direct action, and beginning its new cycle in the sign of Libra, it could wear the mantle of more moderating influences. This Mercury cycle, tinged with Venusian flair, could be concerned with perspective, reason, balance, and harmony. 
And given that there is a constructive energy to the next three months, these principles may be especially important as Mercury winds its way through the astrological signs that are concerned with depth, transformation, expansion, and ultimately hard work. Finally, let's quickly scan the new moon, which is occurring in the sign of Libra. Normally, I would cover this off in next week's forecast, but I want to talk about it today in order to help everyone plan any new moon rituals and intention setting and time those activities accordingly. This is a decent new moon, unafflicted by the malefics, opposing retrograde Jupiter, and though the ruler of this new moon, Venus, doesn't have a direct sightline on the moon itself in order to strengthen its effects, it's not an overall bad moon under which to initiate some Libra-tinged intentions for the month ahead. Given that the planet of expansion, Jupiter, is in opposition and retrograde, this also may be a weaker moon for seeing outward-oriented intentions manifest, even with it being in the sign of fiery Aries. Instead, I'd posit that this is a signature more concerned with stoking our inner fire, calling upon us to channel inner wisdom, faith, and courage in new ventures, especially ventures where we may need to fly solo, under the pioneering spirit of independence. For this new moon, I'd suggest taking a look at your natal charts and seeing where it falls. Though these lunar cycles are brief, they are about the inner work and shifts to our interior landscape, things that are needed in an effort to better align our mental and emotional baseline with our broader solar path. Okay, so that's all I've got for you guys this week. If you enjoyed this forecast, then please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All of those things will help me grow this channel. Also, if you're beginning to think ahead to 2023, then you should know that I'm beginning to release some of my forecasting videos, and the first two are out right now. They're all about Saturn and Pisces. One is a global forecast video, and the other one is rising sign previews, so make sure to check those out. Until next week, everyone, be well and take care.